Our next speaker is Li Shuwei, Vice President at Tencent Cloud Europe. Tencent is one of the most innovative Chinese companies out there. It has a huge influence in China, and this influence is being felt beyond China. Shuwei has been working in the field of technology for nearly two decades, and he had leading positions in several companies, and currently he is leading Tencent's effort to establish itself as a, as a cloud player in Europe. Shuroi, it's great to see you again, my friend, and uh, I'm uh, looking forward to your presentation. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. My name is uh, uh, Li Shuwei, you can call me Liu. Mm. I'm from Tencent, I'm Vice President of uh, Tencent Cloud International. Mm. So uh, today, the topic of my, my keynote is uh, the power of connection. So um, as ever, everyone knows, uh, China's digitalization and the internet industries are very prosperous. And uh, a lot of creative companies have emerged, greatly improving social uh, efficiency, promoting economic development, and uh, improving people's daily life. So uh, what factors have contributed to the prosperity in China today? So what experience is worth learning for other countries. So how do European companies can seize the opportunity to develop together with the wave of uh, digitalization? So I will try to answer these questions in the uh, keynotes below. So um, most of people know Tencent because of WeChat. So everyone knows that WeChat is uh, uh, the most popular communication application in China also uh, in the world as well. So with a more than 1.2 uh, billion monthly active users, the function of WeChat is the equivalent to Facebook plus uh, PayPal plus WhatsApp plus uh, uh, Instagram. So many people think that oh, Tencent is uh, equal to WeChat, WeChat equal to Tencent. But in fact, WeChat is uh, uh, the only uh, a small part of a Tencent business. Tencent currently has 73,000 uh, employees, while uh, WeChat has uh, uh, less than 4,000 uh, staff employees. So Tencent was founded uh, in 1998. It's uh, headquartered in Shenzhen, China. It is the world's number one game company, China's largest uh, video and uh, content service provider, the world's top of uh, five cloud and uh, AI service provider, and China's number one mobile payment service provider. So behind of all the service provided by Tencent, what Tencent actually does is just one thing. It's uh, according to my understanding, it's just one thing. It's the connection. Uh, just connect people to people, connect uh, enterprise and enterprise, connect uh, information and uh, innovation and connect capital and investment. Investment. So the essence of Tencent's business is a connection. Uh, it's a, uh, my understanding. Um, so as you know, as you know, China and the United States are the two largest innovation engines in the world today. And China has more than one billion smartphone users. And the people used to say that a China internet is a copy to China previously, but now it's a copy from China. Uh, so the average daily usage time of smartphone in China is, a, is a over, over six hours. So in, in our daily life, we sleep eight hours and work eight hours uh, in the, out of 24 hours. And the six hours of daily usage time of smartphone, it means except for the three meals and also the time on the road, Chinese people basically spend all the, almost all the spare time on the internet. It can be said that the internet and the digitalization have greatly affected people's daily lives. So on the land of China, there are uh, constantly innovative companies appearing, constantly innovative business model appearing, and constantly innovative technologies appearing. So when uh, summarizing the factors of China digitalization uh, success, 
there are uh, three mainstream views. First, uh, China is the world's the largest single language and a cultural country with more than, more than 1 billion people using the same language. Uh, second, the Chinese government highly encouraged innovation. And third, China has the average uh, of you know, uh, uh, the high quality and high quantity talents. There are nearly 9 million college students graduates uh, from university every year. And uh, in, my, in my understanding, so the, the reasons summarized above are all correct, but I think the most important thing is uh, aggregation. It means the, the aggregation, you know, uh, according to my understanding, has two meaning. One is the aggregation of uh, innovative ideas and talents. Another is the aggregation of capital and investment. So these are the two factors, the more import, important factors. Uh, according to my understanding, the, the digital world can be divided into three layers. Three layers. The first layer is the infra infrastructure layer, including telecommunication, cloud computing infrastructure. And the second layer is the platform and the connection layer, connecting people to people, connecting companies and companies, connecting companies to consumer. So the third layer, the upper layer, it is the industry uh, application layer. So which carries out digital transformation and innovation in various industry, in the, in the uh, various uh, vertical industries. So as of March of this year, China has uh, installed and deployed more than 600,000 5G base stations in more than 400 cities. It can be said that China has already entered the 5G era. Uh, looking back at the history of the telecommunication industry, the telecommunications industry has uh, experienced an evolution from 2G to 3G to 4G to 5G. In the 2G era, the value proportion of the infrastructure layer accounted for more than 90%, and the platform and application layer accounted for less than 10%. It only provides short message uh, information services. Uh, and in the 3G era, the emergence of uh, iPhone has uh, greatly promoted the development of the platform and application layer. And the applications such as Facebook, such as Google have appeared with a value uh, of about 30%. Uh, and the, 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 the lower uh, layer, infrastructure layer, account for 70%. So we come to the 4G, 4G era, video applications and e-commerce have develop, developed greatly. And uh, applications such, uh, such as TikTok, such as uh, uh, Amazon e-commerce appeared and uh, uh, growth. The application layer and the platform layer account for about 50%. Uh, and the, the infrastructure layer account for another 50%. So by 5G, we, came, we, we, we come to the, uh, we go to, uh, we are into the 5G era. We predict various industries will be greatly developed, such as autonomous driving, such as online education, such as uh, smart health care, et cetera. So we, we have all seen that the, the share price of Zoom, like Zoom, like Tesla, have risen you know, uh, about five to 10 times in the past two years. Uh, so in the 5G era, the application layer will account for more than 70%. Uh, so from 2G to 5G, the proportion of uh, infra infrastructure layer value continues to degree. And uh, the proportion of the, the, the application layer and platform layer value will continue to rise. Uh, so therefore, there's a huge room uh, for, the, for the growth in the application layer in the future. And there will be a large number of uh, unicorn companies in various industries to emerge. Uh, in the new release report for the global unicorn companies, the six of the top 10 unicorn companies in the world are from China. So there are uh, 586 unicorn companies in the world. The United States and China has accounted for uh, the total 80%. And both of them are almost the, 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 the same number. Uh, the United States is the number one with uh, 233. And China is the second with uh, 227. Uh, six less than the United States. And the third is the uh, United Kingdom, the UK. So the number is uh, 24. 
So uh, more than 80% of the China's unicorn companies are innovative companies in the third layer of application layer. I just mentioned the third layer, 80% is in this layer. So uh, as I said just now, the core of the China's innovation success is due to two reasons. Uh, one is the aggregation of innovative ideas and talents. So among China's unicorn companies, nearly 60% are from the Greater Bay Area. So this uh, Greater Bay Area is centered on, on Shenzhen. Shenzhen is, uh, is uh, known as a China's Silicon Valley. Shenzhen is uh, also to became, become the world capitals of the innovation, uh, create, uh, creativity, and uh, entrepreneurship as a global benchmark city. So innovative talents and innovative ideas gathered together. Uh, so in you know, large numbers, uh, in just in one, 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 one cities. So the large number of the innovative companies are constantly emerging. Uh, so the accumulation of resources are also uh, needs to exceed a threshold. Uh, so just like we, we, boil the, we boil the hot water. Uh, when, you know, at a 99 degree uh, Celsius, it's always water. The only when it reaches a 100 degree can be become street, uh, uh, stream, steam, uh, steam. So which means we need, you know, the also need the aggregation in a large number in very small areas. Uh, can be generated a lot of innovative uh, startup and uh, uh, innovative companies. This is uh, one of the, uh, my understanding. Uh, So uh, as I mentioned just now, the second factor for the uh, pro prosperity of uh, digital innovation is the aggregation of uh, capital and uh, innovation uh, investment. China is also one of the countries that invest the most in innovation and R&D in the world. Not only the government, but also private companies are also actively engaged in innovation and uh, investment, such as Tencent invest uh, more than uh, 100 billion US dollar every year in innovation and incubation uh, every year. So the benefits the capital can bring to emerging companies are not only money. In addition to money, it's more important to support business, improve the management capability, establish partnership with uh, upstream and downstream, and help to promote the product and service to market. Uh, the capital is the, is the foundation of establishing a good ecosystem. The startup companies uh, can quickly become a talent after joining a perfect ecosystem, focus on their, their own core competitiveness, and quickly gain the foothold in a highly competitive market. The continuous success of the startup companies will attract more people to join the, the team. Uh, so, So uh, what is the role, what is the role uh, does Tencent play, uh, play in this process? So as I said before, the instance of uh, Tencent's business is a connection. So Tencent is uh, constantly making connections between innovative talents and ideas, and constantly making connections between capital and investment. Uh, so Tencent has the ability to connect the enterprise provides cloud computing and AI infrastructure to enterprise customers. At the same time, Tencent has the ability to connect hundreds of millions of consumers to help enterprise uh, to reach their, their target customer, target consumers. So therefore, Tencent's value is a bridge, like a bridge between uh, enterprise uh, and, uh, uh, and the consumers. Tencent is not only a service provider, uh, we also a strategic uh, uh, partners for 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 uh, for all our customers' business. Uh, so um, so with this uh, uh, capabilities of connectivity, Tencent serves many well-known European companies. For example, in the corporate field, uh, we we cooperate with uh, like a BMW, Airbus, Sanofi, Novartis, Merck. Uh, to provide them with a cloud computing and AI platform. So uh, on the other hand, it also helps uh, them, uh, so, uh, this uh, customer to reach uh, a large numbers of consumers. For example, in a consumer field, we also cooperate with uh, like a Supercell, Burberry, 
uh, Audi to help them to risk consumers and also provide them with uh, cloud computing and AI enterprise uh, services. So at the same time, uh, Tencent connects Europe and China, connect the West and the East. China is a, a huge consumer market in the, in the past. The, the 200, 200 million middle uh, class people's con consumption in the United States supports the global manufacturing capacity in the past. So in the future, uh, I think more than 800 million middle class will emerge in, in China. And the Chinese people uh, like European products very much, especially uh, German high-end products have a very good uh, uh, reputation in China. So the future market size in China is huge. So all big companies in Europe uh, shouldn't miss this opportunity. So at the same time, uh, China is also the world's leading innovation center. So European high-end high companies uh, can use China as a, a, a test base for, for, for your own digitalization and innovation. And then copy their, uh, your success, successful experience in China and copy it back to Europe. I have seen many European companies uh, follow this model very well. So I think the trend of the globalization is unstoppable by anyone. So uh, whether we are valuing or not, so everyone uh, can't escape this, uh, this digital wave, I think. So every company and individual must uh, briefly embrace this change and actively practice, uh, participate in the digital innovation wave. Uh, so in the uh, process of digitalization, I think the most important thing is uh, you must choose uh, right partners that suits you best. Uh, so Tencent, based on uh, our uh, ability of a global infrastructure and a global team uh, based on our ability to connect innovation and uh, uh, capital based on our ability, uh, ability to connect the enterprise and the consumer. So I think Tencent is your best business partner uh, in the digitalization journey. So this is my, my, my speech, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Shirway. That was uh, a very interesting speech. Uh, I think uh, we have uh, maybe one minute, if I may ask you one question. Uh, what is, uh, in your experience, the biggest challenge for you as Tencent in uh, entering the European market? Okay, thanks for your question. I think the biggest uh, challenge for us is still the uh, brand awareness. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, we are a Chinese company and uh, um, as previously, Tencent is very strong in the uh, we so-called uh, to see business uh, to the consumer and uh, uh, to business to to be to to the enterprise business. We are still a uh, newcomer, uh, especially in, in Europe. So I think this uh, brand awareness is still the, the biggest challenge for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think uh, I'm sure this will change. I mean, uh, in China, I think there's not a single Chinese person who doesn't know Tencent, and uh, we will hear a lot from you in, uh, in Europe and as well as in other countries. So thank you very, very much for your time, and thank you for joining us today. See you soon. Thank you very much. See you. Thank Bye. You. See you. Bye. Mm.